Hello everyone. Happy Thursday. Thanks for coming in tonight, guys. Uh, hey, re replay viewers. Thanks for coming in. And hey, YouTube viewers. Nice to see you as well. Uh, if you'd like to participate live in the chat down here, just uh, download Perisco Periscope to your device and search for Penguin and Fish. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. We have a new black tonight. It is Bose. It is a cute little itty bitty Bose. And it's paper piecing. So I got all my paper piecing stuff out. I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get going tonight. Hello everyone. Happy Thursday. Thanks for coming in. So black 70, I kind of like when I wrote down 70, I'm just like, oh my gosh, we only have 30 blocks after this is this one, and uh, I don't know, it seems like it's getting awfully close to the end, but we are doing itty bitty bitty paper piecing, um, tiny little bows, it'll look like bows, uh, you kind of can't tell from this photo, but if you go to the, the splendidsampler.com or the Splendid Sampler Facebook page, you can see a bunch of people doing their bows there. So uh, that's what we're going to do tonight, guys. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a Fabric Designer, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around and we'll get started tonight. All righty, here... I got everything I need. This is kind of what I think I'm going to use for the bows. So I'm going to do this blue background. We've kind of been using this lately in the other blocks, but I do have a lot of it. And I think it's just a nice, pretty blue. And I'm going to do light colors on top for the bows. So there's four bows. I'm going to do those two and these two. So they'll kind of, they'll kind of be looking like this. Cute little, cute little bows pinched in the middle a little bit. So that's my plan. Uh, these are my larger pieces of it, but I do have my my uh, scrap in here. So like here, I can see already that I can use you know pieces like that. So I'll I'll grab from here if I can first. This is an awfully large piece for my scrap bin. We'll use that tonight for sure. So all right, to get going, um, you know some other things that I have that I'm gonna use are a postcard. Uh, it's just this is I what I use for my straight edge. It's just, you know, a thick piece of paper. The little postcards that come in magazines would work, but this is a postcard for that. And I have a little glue stick. Um, I'm using this, I use this for the number one piece of all the paper piecing. And I'll show you that. And then I got my scissors, paper scissors, and my rotary cutter and sewing machine, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so I am going to skip all of this and go straight to the uh, paper piecing template. Um, this, is, uh, this is how they'll all be put together when we're done. But these are our paper piecing bits. So we're going to do four of these. So you can see it's made up of the A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So this is, has several sections that will paper piece all of these separate and then we will sew them all together. So it's a little puzzle piece. It's kind of a, it's got everything um, that we've been doing with paper piecing. It has the, it's, so it's kind of actually a little bit more advanced when I look at this. It's got a few triangles, it's got these itty bitty pieces and then it's piecing all these together. Uh, the nice thing, though, is that there are a lot of rectangles, and those are really easy with paper piecing. Um, sometimes when there's lots of angles, it gets a little confusing. But all right, so I printed out four pieces of these so I could, because uh, we, we're doing four total. I think I'm just going to cut out, cut them out one at a time, uh, and I'm going to set everything else aside. So let's get cutting. So all these pieces include the seam allowance. Sometimes when you see paper piecing patterns, it just is to the line here like this, and you'll only see that. You'll have to add your own uh, seam allowance. But we're always going to be adding a seam allowance. So she, you wouldn't forget to do that, really. 
Uh, but I'm going to cut these out on the seam allowance that they gave us. Again, I probably could just cut it to, to the edge and it'd be fine, but I'm going to just really quick, quickly, roughly cut the seam allowance here. It's just um, a guide for me. Let's jump down to here. Of all the things I've learned through this project, oh, this method of paper piecing is the best. That's good to hear. I, I totally love this method too. It just makes things so easy. There's no measuring. There's no, you know, sewing your scant quarter inch. It's just blobs and, yeah, love the blobs. <laughs> Yeah, I just, it, it gets rid of, honestly, it gets rid of all the things that are my least favorite things about quilting and doing quilt related things. Like, uh, like what I was saying, I don't have to cut perfectly perfect squares. Uh, I don't have to worry about, is my scant quarter inch just perfect? Um, I don't even have to worry about sewing a straight line because I just sew right along the line. It's just kind of nice. There's one more thing that I that I always say that I love about paper piecing. I can't remember. I'm sure, we'll get to it. Oh well, I you know then there's the given of that you get to do really really intricate designs that look like you're some magic wizard that can just sew all these tiny things together and make it look like something. Um, there's that, which is pretty dang cool. All right, here's, I got an F piece, an E piece. Oh, so another thing, oh yeah, precise points, all that is great. What's nice about this pattern, usually when I um, do a paper piecing pattern like this, I will color in the areas uh, that are a different fabric. You know, like, like I'll color in the, the colors of my fabric right on my paper with um, colored pencil. But with this pattern, it's a little hard to see from my printout, uh, but it was already colored in. So all the white parts are my background and all these slightly gray parts are my bow. So I just, so I don't have to color it in myself. I can, I can see it all there. So that, that's kind of nice. I want to just get the front page out. Yeah, see, so all my, all my things are colored in. I have paper piece before. Oh, with the straight edge. Yeah, with the, the postcard. The postcard, uh, we'll get to the postcard, but this is really the trick. And what that does is it, al it allows you to cut whatever shape you want, basically, just blobs. It doesn't have to be a perfectly done shape with a perfect edge, perfect whatever. Um, and it still allows you to have perfect seam allowances and you do it as you go. You don't have to pre-fold anything, uh, which is another method that I've, I've done before. Um, it's, it's just easy peasy. You don't have to cut them all when you're done. All right, this is our A piece. Look how small this is though. This is really itty bitty. Okay, I know there's more pieces here they are. Oh no, you got your postcard by mistake. You'll have to get a new postcard. Yeah, these are all really tiny pieces. But luckily they are rectangles, which is super duper easy with paper piecing. So we'll see how far we get on this tonight. I have a feeling uh, since there's four of these, uh, some of the other nights that we work on this, like today I'll explain stuff. Um, I'll try to explain things and answer questions as best I can for, for this, uh, for the paper piecing of this first block. But then after that, I might just try and go as fast as I can through them. <laughs> Because there are four, and you know, Sunday comes up quick. Sunday is our new block day, and I'd like to get as as far as I can. But it is nice, uh, just for me, you know, because I always kind of have to remind myself how to do this every single time I do it a little bit. So it's it's nice to um, do that. 
Woo, Lori Holt of B in my bonus scrappy planner today. Oh, that's exciting. Is it like a, a day planner or is it a planner to plan scrappy projects? I'm a little familiar with it. And this is our tiny little beat piece. Oh, pages for projects and an appointment book. Ooh, both of them together. Oh, that's exciting. Then you, you always have a place to write down your ideas and stuff when they come. Oh, I love that idea. Oh, and it has 50 projects in too. Holy cow, that's that sounds awesome. I'm gonna have to look that up. Okay, so just <laughs> I just threw all my paper on the ground. So paper piecing does make a little bit of a mess in your area uh, that you're working in, so um, there is that. But okay, let's take a look at this. So you can really do these in any order that you want, but I'm going to go in alphabetical order. So I'm going to put all these aside and just start with uh, A. So this is our A section. Um, and I, like I said, I didn't cut out the other blocks yet, which is good because I won't, you know, I don't want to mix up everything. I, I don't want to get too confused. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cut them out one at a time. So I'm going to just set those aside and let's start with A. And unfortunately, it is a little hard to see the gray on my printout, but uh, let me just fill it in a little so you can see. I think it looks like A1, A3, and A5 are the bow part, and A4, A4 and A2 are the background. So let's uh, let's pick a color to start out with. I think let's let's do this just because I I found that big piece uh, in in my scrap pile. And I wonder if we have some of this in our scraps. I'm kind of thinking we don't have a lot of these scraps yet because I just I just started using using that fabric. But let's dig in here. Ooh, I got some more pieces. See these tiny little pieces with these tiny paper piecing um, bits. I can actually use these for something, you know? I mean, that's kind of exciting. Oh gosh, I got a ton of those. Let's take all those out. All right, I think that's it. All right, I might—I mean, I might not even need this. I can probably just use all these. So let's let's see though. I didn't I didn't see any of this in here though, so I don't think I have any real scraps of this yet. So we'll we'll use it from the fresh sheet here. Okay, I don't need my paper scissors anymore. We'll get rid of that. Okay, this is what I got of these pieces. Oh, you know what? I might not have a piece big enough. Well, this might be big enough. So what we're looking for is a piece of fabric that, uh, well, first of all, we're going to start with A1. We're going to go in order. So A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. So we want uh, to start with A1. We want to find a piece of fabric that's as big as our shape plus a generous seam allowance. And what I mean by a generous seam allowance is more than a quarter inch. Um, you know, it can almost be up to a half inch even really. Uh, the bigger a seam allowance you have, the less you have to pay attention to your seam allowance and to make sure that, you know, you're gonna have enough fabric. So I kind of err on the side of going a little big just cause it is easier. So this is my biggest piece. So what I do is I, I put the fabric uh, right side down and then I lay uh, my shape on top of it and you know what this is awfully shy like this is not of a good generous seam allowance I you know we do have about a quarter of an inch but I I like it a lot bigger than that but for the sake of being able to use up stuff yeah I don't think this is big enough yeah uh, for the sake of being able to use up fabric, I am going to use this piece. So I'm going to just trim it. I didn't measure. All I did is um, now I know that I have a piece that's just barely big enough. I mean, really, we're, we're cutting it kind of close here. Uh, I have one more tool that we're going to use. I have um, an add a quarter ruler, and I will show you what that is in a sec here. But all right, so for the one pieces, so like this, for example, is A1, the one pieces we treat a little differently than all of our other pieces. We're going to just put a dab of glue on the back of this uh, and then uh, just place it 
where it needs to be on our fabric. Um, since there, we haven't sewn it to the paper yet or anything like that, uh, it's just kind of floating on its own in the, the first pieces. But once we sew it to the A2 piece, then, then you know, we're all attached and we don't really need that glue anymore. But for the A1 pieces, we're going to put a dab of glue in all of them. So our, when we're done, it's actually going to be on this side. It's going to be our finished side. Uh, this is going to be the wrong side of our fabric when we're done. So this is actually flipped. It's reversed. But, you know, it's equal, an equilateral sort of things. It's a mirrored image of each other, of all the sides, so it doesn't really matter. But um, that means it's going to end up like this. Not like this. We don't want to sew it like this. We want to sew it with the um, right side out. So I'm going to place that with the right side down. I'm going to put a little dab of glue on that A1 piece, which kind of, in this case is right in the middle there. Just a tiny dab. And I'm just using, I don't know, this is just like a children's glue, just like something, like a cheap little temporary glue stick, like an Elmer's glue stick. All right, so now I'm going to try and get this piece on here with the seam allowances all good on every side. Again, I would err on the side of larger seam allowances than what I'm using. Like this is a good size seam allowance, a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. This is pretty tiny right here, but I can use up a scrap and I'm kind of erring on that. Uh, I would recommend using larger pieces though. So, all right, technically A1 is done. <laughs> so, you know, congrats, <laughs> A1 is done. So, all right, let's move on to A2. So here's where uh, our real process starts once you're done with A1. Uh, A2 through the rest of the numbers, we're going to do exactly the same way. So, all right, A2, we're going to first get our postcard. And I'm going to put the postcard right on that line in between A2 and everything that came before. In, in this case, it's just the A1. So I'm going to place that postcard on top of everything that came before. So the A2 is exposed. And I'm going to forget about all the other numbers, everything else, all the seam allowances. I'm going to ignore those and uh, just fold along that line the entire, the entire width. So there we go. And again, I don't really have that big of a seam allowance. But here's where the add a quarter ruler comes in. An add a quarter ruler is like specifically for paper piecing. It has a little lip on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, and what that does is I can just bump it right up to the postcard. You know, I don't have to measure. I don't have to look at it. I can just go zoop. Like I can do this with my eyes closed, really. Plop it up against there. And then, you know, usually there's a bigger piece there. I can just trim it away and I get a good seam allowance. And again, I'm, I erred on the side of using my scrap versus a better seam allowance. Um, so this will make more sense when we do another side. But you know, you can also just take your ruler, put it right at the quarter inch mark there, line everything up, and then, you know, cut normally. But once you have an add a quarter ruler, you're going to realize how annoying that is. How annoying to line it up every single time. And you know, I know it's like, oh, but you know, how hard is it to line up a quarter inch? Well, it's not hard, but it sure, you know, doesn't beat just going bloop and then cutting right away. So <laughs> I thought it was a silly, a silly thing to have, but then I thought, ah, I'm going to see what all the buzz is about because people kept saying I should get one. And now I just kind of love it. Uh, okay. So anyway, let's move on. We've cut our seam allowance. Uh, again, this was a little short, so we ended up not really cutting anything, but okay. This is um, a background piece, so I, I haven't filled it in with the pencil. So this is one of our background colors, which is right here. Let's open this up. Okay, here's some spots for already cutting. So I'm going to put it face down, or right side down. It's kind of a big piece. So again, we want a piece that is going to be as big as this A2 
plus a generous seam allowance. And we can, luckily it has like the seam allowance built in, so you know it has to be at least that big. I would go, I would err on the side of going, you know, almost a half inch all the way around. So triangles, uh, for a triangle, what I like doing is I, um, you know, we have this edge that we folded. I like putting that edge right on a straight edge in the fabric I want to be doing. So, but I, with a with a seam, a seam allowance there, a generous seam allowance. But I want to run it parallel to a straight line, and sometimes I'll cut a line so I can do this, and then I'll just lay this down. So I got you know a good seam allowance on that side, and uh, um, now I can just cut. Now I know what shape to cut. Because sometimes with triangles, especially when they get all like scalene or they're, they're not like a nice pretty triangle like this, uh, it, it can get a little difficult uh, to know what angles to cut. It gets a little mind, um, you know, puzzling. So this is what I do. This is what I do to solve that. I put the fabric face down. I put um, that edge that we just folded along one of the edges we have on here um, with the generous seam allowance. And now I'll just, you know, this is clearly, I can get a nice triangle shape here. I think I'm just gonna take this and right across there. So I didn't, I didn't measure, I didn't do anything. This is clearly large enough, um, you know, and it's a blob, it's not a perfect shape. Uh, this straight edge is um, good enough. I, I'm not gonna trim that more. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take that straight edge and match it up with the straight edge that we just cut for the seam allowance. And uh, uh, to test to make sure that you've cut a piece big enough, I mean I know I can, I can see on this tiny thing that um, I've cut it big enough, but you can do a test where you pretend that you are sewing it with a pin. Usually I do two pins, but this is such a small piece that I'm just gonna put one there. And now I'm gonna pretend iron it open. And when you pretend iron it open, if you turn it around and, it, and your piece covers that A2 plus your generous seam allowance, then you know that you've positioned your fabric in a, in a good spot. So I'm just gonna take that out and now we can start sewing. So at the sewing machine, I have made my stitch length shorter than usual uh, because with each uh, stitch, it's gonna poke a hole in my, in my paper and that'll make it easier to tear off. So the more holes, the easier to tear. So that's why I do the stitch length less than what you normally would. Um, I normally have it at, at about a twelfth of an inch and I, I just uh, turn it down from there. So I'm going to stitch. Let me get my little stiletto here. Oh, I have it out already. I'm going to stitch, just so you can see, right along this A2 line. But since there's seam allowance all the way around, I'm going to go in the seam allowance as well. So I'm going to start up here, go to here, through this line, and then into this seam allowance as well. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to backstitch at, at both points as well, just to kind of secure things. If your line is on the inside, and I don't think we have any, I think all of these go to the seam allowance. Yeah, all our pieces kind of go to the seam allowance. Oh, that's kind of funny. So that's a little different than other paper piecing bits, but um, we'll be going from seam allowance to seam allowance on all of these. I'm still going to back tack or, or stay stitch, which is just basically... Um, you're going a stitch ahead and then a stitch in reverse and then doing your line. Um, here I'm going right on that line. And that just helps kind of lock the end of your stitch in place. So now I'm in the seam allowance. We'll do another little back tack. And there we go. Let me get a little scissors. Here we are. Okay. Snip that off and I 
like snipping the ends off right away from both sides because then uh, it gets pretty unruly when you have all these crazy threads on the back. There we go, out of here, threads. Okay, now up to the iron. So we're gonna press this open. Um, you can kind of finger press it to see what it's starting to look like. But uh, when, you, when you press for paper piecing, the side that you print it on, you wanna make sure that's face down. If you press it like this, the ink from there could get on your iron. So you don't want that to happen. Don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna just give it a press to set the stitches. First of all, and now I'm going to finger press it, open the part that's sewn, which is just right here, and um, extend that finger pressing along the entire edge there. And now we'll press that. Did you get the picture? What picture? <laughs> ah. It might be something totally obvious, but my, uh, my brain might not be working tonight. Did you send me a picture? I'll have to check my email. If you did, I didn't, I have to, um, check all that. But anyway, here is, you know, we got A1 and A2 done. So that's it. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, did you send it to me in the mail today? You know what? I haven't been really buy my mailbox or my uh, email today at all. It was kind of, okay, I will check after we're done here. How exciting, yay, newborn. Um, I will for sure look, uh, but all right, so here we are done with A2. So let's let's keep going. It doesn't look like much now, does it? it actually, it's pretty cute. It looks like a little fun house, <laughs> uh, but it'll, it'll come together. So next is A3. So this is our bow fabric again. Let's see if we can get something out of these scraps. It looks like we might be able to, like this big triangle, I think will do the job right here. Um, so let's start with our postcard though. So I'm going on the line in between A3 and everything that came before. Oh, you posted on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, I will take a look. Oh, you know what? With the... Uh, this folding though, going into the seam allowance, it makes it a little harder to sew or to, to fold. So you gotta undo a little bit of the paper right there that was on that seam allowance. And I'm gonna take it off from both sides. So both sides are folded up there like that. And now here's where the attic quarter comes in nice. We just bop this on right there, no measuring. And we trim this whole thing off Oops, I don't think I got it all. Yeah, I did. So that blob of blue fabric and the excess from there that we didn't have to cut perfectly are now a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. It's kind of awesome. All right, so now we need our A3 piece. So again, to check what I like doing is I have that edge that we just cut. I think this piece will, will be our piece right here. I'm gonna put that on this straight edge right here, about right there, making sure I have a good uh, seam allowance on that side. And then we'll double check, do I have enough seam allowance over this whole thing? And I, ooh, let's put it right side down though. Luckily, it's not gonna change much here. But yeah, so this is uh, looking good. So, all right, so this already has a straight edge, so I'm gonna use that straight edge to match it up with, where'd number three go? Right here. So I'm gonna just center that on number three, Ooh, with right sides together. Oh man, it's gonna be one of those nights. I'm gonna end up with a backwards piece in here. And I'm not gonna do the test on here because this is clearly a big enough piece for this. So I'm gonna just go right to the machine. And I'm gonna sew on that line again. So I really wasn't at my computer all day today. It was kind of crazy. Uh, I did some some stuff in, oh, you used to add an eighth. Yeah, that's probably a good idea for this one. The add a quarter ruler comes in and add an eighth ruler for itty bitty pieces like this. 
But we ended up just doing, my husband and me just ended up working on house stuff all day today. And by house stuff, I mean mounting our TV to the wall. <laughs> That's like literally all we did today. And it took us forever to find a stud in our wall. Um, we were able to find one stud, but we wanted it to be further over and we couldn't figure out where the heck this other stud was or any other studs in the wall. And it had to go in uh, a stud because we had like these bolts that were this big. Um, on the black wall, yes, on the black wall. I don't, I don't have the add an eighth and add a quarter in my shop. Maybe that's something I should start stocking. Um, I do have, I'll have a link on it. And whenever I do a paper piecing video, I'll, I have a link in the, in YouTube in the um, description area. Uh, I have a link to Amazon, which is, um, you know, where you can link, find a link to it. But yeah, you know what? I wonder if I, maybe next time I place an order for, I just have like my online shop, um, penguinandfish.com. Maybe I'll throw one of those in or something. That'd be kind of fun. It's mostly embroidery stuff there though, so I don't know. I don't know about the add a quarter, but I do have that link. Um, they're, I think they're only like, I don't know, $9 or something maybe? $12? $7? Somewhere in that range. Between $7 and $12, I think, uh, the, for the add a quarter ruler. And I, I got the 12 inch one. I'm kind of really happy with the 12 inch one. Oh, you want to want the TV too? Yeah. You know, it's part of that experiment that we did with the black wall. <laughs> so we painted our wall black uh, this past weekend. And uh, because then when the TV's off, it just kind of recedes into the wall. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you saw that there's a three ace at the cool star. Oh, that's not a bad idea doing a three ace one, especially for bigger paper piece blocks. All right, there we go. A1, A2, A3. It's going to start to look like something soon. Uh, so let's let's keep moving. A4. So we get the postcard again. Cover up everything over there and leave A4 exposed. But yeah, so the mounting it on the wall was part of the having it recede into the wall thing. We have a little bench that it, it used to sit on. And I kind of like that that bench is now a lot more empty. I mean, it still has like the DVD player and the all that sort of crap on there. Um, but maybe that stuff won't be there forever and it'll be like this empty bench and our floating TV that doesn't exist until you turn it on sort of thing. Silly. But like, I'm so happy about the black. I think it turned out great and the effect of the TV being off and it just receding looks just how we thought it would, or we're hoping it would, and I don't know. The black ended up being feeling really warm in the house too, which is kind of kind of a funny side effect. But we're really liking it so far. So all right, A four is another background piece, which is the blue. So let's let's try and find another piece here. I, I'm going to do it the same way where I'm on this, uh, I'm lining up this fold. I think I might be able to sneak out a triangle right here. So I'm going to put it right kind of on this fold like that. And, um, oops, you know what? Not like that, like this. Oh, see, that's what I'm saying. One of those nights. So there we go this way. So I have my seam allowance that you can see right there. Let's get one center for you guys. And now I can see, uh, um, I can find my, I can go like down here a little bit more, so I'm wasting a little less. But again, I'm looking for a piece as big as the A4 plus our generous seam allowance. So you know what? I think I'm just gonna go like this. We'll cut up this piece just so it's not in our way. And uh, there we go. So I'm gonna take that straight edge and uh, match it up. So uh, you've gotten sick. I am feeling like I'm trying to ward off a possible cold, which is not making me happy. Um, so 
about like 7 p.m. I'm gonna do a quick full up test. Yeah, I think we'll be good right here. Um, at 7 p.m. for the past few nights, I've just been feeling kind of <sighs> like heady, like uh, cold, head coldy a little bit, like getting really kind of sleepy and you know, heavy headed, <laughs> I guess is the way to say it. So I've been kind of, I've been taking an evening nap, which I don't do. Like I never, I never nap. Um, I mean, it's something I'm actually trying to get the hang of for this whole napping thing, even though I, I can't fall asleep um, for like just 20 minutes, but I can at least lay in bed and relax a little bit. So because I've been feeling this kind of cold coming on and I got a lot that I'm dealing with right now, so I, I can't get sick. Um, not dealing with, but a lot on the docket. Uh, so, lost my scissors, here we go. So I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to drink a lot of water and, you know, when I'm feeling like I need to nap, I'm taking a nap, even though I'm not falling asleep, but I'm just chilling a little bit and I don't know, trying to do those things. I'm hoping it works, we'll see. And I've been going to bed a little earlier than usual, which is not really all that earlier. I, I'm still not getting, you know, still not getting eight hours or anything like that, but um, a little bit earlier than usual. Pressing this. Ooh, we just have one more piece to this little guy. Yeah, I feel like I don't even go anywhere though, so I'm like, where would I get a cold from? It's annoying. All right. Oh. Okay, there we go. You've been drinking hot lemon tea. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds really good. Yeah, I had tea yesterday too, which uh, I haven't had tea in a while. Which I used to have tea all the time, so that's kind of kind of weird. All right, let's let's do this last piece. I have a feeling that. My pieces here are not going to be big enough, although now that I look at this, oh yeah, so with the seam allowance, you know, I need, I need that generous seam allowance. If all I needed was that little five, this would be great, but I need that seam allowance and I only have like maybe an eighth inch seam allowance. So that's, that's too scary for me. I need a bigger seam allowance than that. But first things first, let's fold that piece. I'm going to get a lemon. I think I should do that. Tomorrow's gonna be lemon water day. Sliding around a little bit. So again, I gotta tear these out of the fabric a little. But it's definitely annoying. I can feel it just a hair. I'm gonna just leave those little paper bits. Feel it just a hair coming on and no good. Okay, A5. What do I need for that? Okay, that's that's one of these pieces. I'm gonna just use one of these bigger ones. Again, I'm gonna line up that uh, piece with a straight edge. That looks good. And I'm gonna just cut my blob. You know, and your blob doesn't have to be, you know, a triangle either. You can just, there, that's gonna be my blob this time. Just a crazy circle. So I'm gonna match up the straight edges, right sides together. And again, you could do the, a test, but these pieces are so small and I'm cutting pieces so big that I know that this is gonna match up fine. The lemon water or cinnamon? I almost said cinnamon. <laughs> That's what uh, we used to say when we were little. Cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon and water. That sounds scary. <laughs> So I am not going to take the paper off of this until we're entirely done sewing all the pieces. What was the ruler with the hole for the needle? Oh, it's, do I have it somewhere here? 
It's from Perkins Dry Goods. Um, oh, so they do have an email address on here, or a, web, a website. So it's it's uh, Perkins Dry Goods. And this is by Celine Perkins. And she actually did one of our blocks as well. I think block number five? I think, I think she did block number five. But yeah, so it has a hole in there. Uh, that you put your needle in and then it measures a scant, a, a scant uh, quarter seam allowance so you can mark it on your on your machine. It's kind of a neat little neat little doicky. Oh yours is your ruler's red. Does she have different colors? I don't know I haven't I haven't checked. Oops I'm like, I missed something here. I gotta snip these guys off. Yeah, so I've been actually showering earlier. Usually I shower, I shower at night and I usually shower after I get the YouTube starting to upload from, you know, this. Uh, but I've been showering earlier in the evening so I can start my upload and go to bed right right when I'm done <laughs> with uh, with these, this uh, stream. That's a good question. Does lemon water still work when it's cold? Or does it have to be hot? I I love hot stuff. That's why I, that's why I drink a coffee in the morning. It's just so nice to have a warm, smoky, yummy, hot cup. And I don't know. I just kind of love it. All right. So this, believe it or not, is piece A. And all we have to do is trim it, uh, and uh, then it'll look like something for real. Um, so to trim it, I, I get a normal ruler, and uh, I put my uh, the quarter inch on the ruler on this quarter inch in you know which is actually the edge of what our piece, sewn piece is going to be. I kind of ignore the seam allowances; those are kind of a guide, but I don't want to use that as my like holy grail. I want to use uh, use these inside lines, so I'm gonna line up my quarter inch with those and then trim all the way around and you might see I might get tiny little pieces of paper coming off and that's because I'm I cut the outside too big that's why it's important to use these maybe I'll have some tea after I'm done here that sounds really good So if I don't want to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, if I drink late tea, that's probably TMI. <laughs> okay, one more. And okay, here is our A piece. So with our seam allowances gone, it's kind of just like a little square with a little triangle on the end. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you guys. <laughs> That's the problem. That's like, ah, do I want to drink some water now? I don't know. Let's, I just want to kind of peek at what this is going to kind of look like. Let's see. A little confusing. Where do all these other pieces go? Um, like this, and this, so it's kind of hard to tell what's going on here. Um, where does this go? Huh, weird, this seems a little... Different. Anyway, whatever. We'll keep going. Yeah, just a small cup of tea. Anyway, let's keep going. So that's A1. We're done with a whole a whole piece here. So I think we can get one more done tonight, and then we'll finish up the... I think we can finish the whole rest of the block uh, tomorrow, I'm, I'm hoping. So let's, let's do... let's go do the Bs. So, I mean, this was our most advanced piece, for sure. We had triangles. Um, we had the most number of pieces. All the rest are super easy. I mean, these only have two pieces. These only have three and they're rectangles. And these aren't really pieces at all. They're just extra little rectangles, you know? 
So uh, let's let's do the B piece. So the B piece has B1 and B2. B1 is the background piece. B2 is a foreground piece or a bow piece. And let's just grab a little chunk out of here. Let's see. You know what? I'm going to just go right here. So again, I'm looking for a piece as big as that plus the generous seam allowance. I'm just going to do a blob right there. And you know what? I'm going to just cut that out with, with my scissors. There, that's for sure a blob. So, all right, let's grab our little tiny bit of glue because it's the one piece, the B1, and the one pieces we just put on with a little glue. I'm going to center it. You notice I cut this on the bias, uh, which is at an angle. That's the nice thing about paper piecing. It doesn't really matter what angle you're doing at all. Um, so I'm not worrying about that. At all. So, okay, B1 is done. Did you see that I have, oh, you have two tiny blocks done? Oh man, I gotta check out the, I haven't been anywhere online really today, so I'll have to check all the news everywhere. <laughs> all right, our postcard between B1 and B2. Fold her up. And let's get to add a quarter ruler. And trim. I did replace the blade on here. I did not forget tonight, so no extra little mix for me tonight. All right, B2 is, oh, you did two of these tiny ones. B2 is this fabric in, but I think we might be able to use one of these itsy bitsy scraps. Oh god, that is cutting it so close, but you know what? I think I'm going to do it. It is right on the edge. Maybe it's safer to do it this way. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it this way, then I can get a real seam allowance. There. That's better. So I'm going to just put this straight edge right there. Now we have plenty of seam allowance. Oh, it's so cool to use up all these little scraps, though. These are sometimes the size that I'm like, ah, oh, are they, are they too small for me to save? But I can rely on paper piecing these itsy bitsy paper piecings to use them. So I think this whole block is going to get a lot easier after that A section because I mean we're basically done with this B section. You know I'm not even going to trim my threads because they're not going to get in, in the way. We're going to trim them off um, right away. So let's let's press her quick. I feel like I am sewing a little crooked. I wonder if that's because I'm. I don't have my normal foot on. Oh yeah, look, I didn't get all the way to the edge either. Uh-oh. I think I should almost take that out. I can't believe I have to pull out this piece. It's like the easiest piece ever. And look, so that's what happens when you don't have a big enough seam allowance. You don't make it to the edge. But I, I must not align these up very well either. So, boo! That's what I think about that. I'm going to actually get this seam ripper out. I cannot believe that this is the piece, the simplest piece out of this whole thing, and I got to pull it out. I probably would have been fine. I just would have had like an eighth inch seam allowance instead of a, um, instead of a quarter inch, but still, but hey, we can do the cool seam ripping. So after you get like that first couple little bits out, then what you do is you actually turn the red little bob side down. So you're not using that, that picky part of it, the pointy part. You're going to put it right underneath and 
it should just, uh, if you pull in a little, it should just, the whole thing should come right out. Kind of at a funny angle, so it doesn't work all that well. But there we go. Let's try that again. Grr. Well, boo. Let's do that again. So this time, let's sew better on that line. Let's hope I line that up just a bit better. Okay, let's get doing this again. It was a little hard on a little piece like this. If you sewed a really long seam, like a whole block, like a whole long seam, and you did that trick where you where you turn it this way, where you can actually lay it flat, you know, if you can lay it flat on on a hard surface like this, then then you should be able to do that a lot easier than you know, with these little pieces that kind of hard to hold. So with a long, a long piece. Okay, let's do this again. So that is the risk you take by using pieces that don't have a generous seam allowance. <laughs> so I always, always, always recommend the bigger seam allowance. And look, the moment I don't do that is when it gets messed up. But look how far off I was last time. You can see I was like a sixteenth of an inch off. And there, I'm still just barely touching the top. So again, that was pretty risky using that little scrappy piece, you know, so risky that I actually had to redo it, but um, ah well, that's the that's the deal. Do you guarantee that you're gonna have a piece big enough and everything's hunky dory and you get it right on your first try, or do you risk having to seam rip? Then which are you more okay with? <laughs> that is the question, right? And apparently, I was more okay with having seam rip, but using up my tiny scrap. <laughs> So, okay, this piece is done. Now we just basically trim this guy too, and uh, and then B, the B section is done. So that there was nothing to that, other than I had to redo it. But, all right. Road cutter. So I'm just cutting all the way around the edge again. Easiest piece, so you can mess up on the super easy pieces too. Uh, annoying. I'm telling you, my brain's not working. I'm getting, I'm getting a head cold or something. I have to work hard tonight for my brain. Yeah, I'm excited to see what this. It's going to look like with all these itsy bitsy bows. Okay, but there is, yes, exactly. <laughs> Here is our B piece, and I'm just trying to find out what it goes again. It goes uh, up like that, so it wants the seams together, kind of like this. So, all right, our bow is starting. Yes, brain, it says I need some hot lemon tea. That is happening. Maybe chamomile. I have chamomile. I don't have any lemon, but I think we have some chamomile. All right, so we are going to just keep adding to um, this bow, but you can start to see that you know our bow is getting a little bit bigger there. So our bow will probably be like this big, and then we got to do four more of them <laughs> or three more of them. So I'm gonna stop it there tonight, though, guys, and uh, we will pick this up tomorrow. Yeah, I was just hearing that he was just coughing the background, which uh, does not make me feel like, I don't know, makes me think that maybe there's, this is a cold thing. It has actually gotten cold, like physically cold here, though. Um, so I think that's might maybe affecting us a little bit too, just that it's actually cold in the house all of a sudden, and it wasn't. So our bodies are like, wow, 
what's going on here? I don't like this. And dry air. Yeah, we've had a little bit of dry air lately, too. Yeah, none of that stuff I like. All right, I'm going to flip you guys around. There we go. So here we are. Teeny, teeny, tiny. <laughs> Look how small this piece is. It, the smallest itsy bitsy pieces. It is just so little. <laughs> ah, so we'll continue this tomorrow. I think if we kind of speed through, now that we have this first one done that uh, took, took kind of a long time, uh, now I think we'll just be able to whip through them like now that we just have these tiny little pieces and then the trick will be putting them all together because we are going to have to match up points when we put them together uh, like when we put the pieces together like that and that can take a little bit of time but I think we're going to try doing it with the wonder clips again. Hopefully we'll get to that tomorrow. I think we'll at least finish all the pieces. I'm not quite sure if we'll get to the wonder clipping together, but I'm, I'm hoping we will. So that's the plan for tomorrow, and this will go up tonight. Fishes! <laughs> so, all right. Uh, this will go up uh, on Penguin and Fish movies uh, tonight. I'll get it uploading right now, and then I'm going to go to bed so I don't get sick, and I will have some chamomile tea while... That uploads. <laughs> so thanks, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks. I will do my best. I, I'm not quite feeling bad. I can just kind of feel it on the cusp a little bit. So I'm, I'm trying to push that, that like, fence further away <laughs> and get on the good side of it again. So that's the plan. <laughs> it's happening. I'm going to stay healthy. That's the plan. So all right, guys. I will see you tomorrow night. Have a great evening. Good night.